Michigan, home to lots of bikes, birthplace of Lego, the little, actually very little, mermaid, and um, two of my very least favorite beers in the whole world. It's not as bad as I remember. We actually got here yesterday. Um, the weather wasn't so great. Didn't stop us though. We hopped on a canal tour uh, to check out the colorful houses. That was fun because Hayes actually really enjoyed it. <laughs> then we wandered around and found ourselves in the Lego store. And then we went looking for food, found a beautiful market, uh, didn't really want to sit down or spend the money and cook dinner in our Airbnb. It's going to be a common thing here. It's very expensive. But this morning, we are um, coming to the design museum. For lunch, we've come to this place called Sliders that I saw on YouTube. And it wasn't like $100 per burger. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about how much everything costs here. But anyway, they do like pretty creative sliders. Mine has like pickled squash. And I, I don't even know. They're little burgers. It's like not revolutionary, but it's delicious. Great view though. I mean, we're like overlooking this canal body of water and it's a beautiful day. Mm. I have four burgers. Okay, Hayes has had his nap. We're headed to Tivoli Gardens because you're supposed to do that. I'm gonna admit that I have extremely low expectations, but have we mentioned how fantastic the public transportation is here? Because it's incredible. We never wait more than a minute. Nowhere's ever more than 15 minutes, and we're staying like not super centrally. Seamless. It's like unbelievable. And there's so much of it. And it's so frequent, like you just said. Where are we going? Excellent. Okay, we made it to Tivoli. The cool thing is that it's in the middle of the city. It's like literally next to the central station. My first impression is that like, even though it's the second oldest theme park in the world, I'm just still not convinced that we're theme park people. However, the first thing I noticed when you walked in is like a handcraft cocktails and beer station. So if you're gonna do a theme park, do it. Do it as the Danes do. I didn't get one, but the fact that I could. Oh, that's pretty tall, isn't it? He got down a slide with his back. <laughs> We did not buy a ride pass, so we just bought a single ride each on, I don't know, a camel thing. $20. Uh, Hayes loved it. My verdict on Tivoli is that we've yet to find the theme park that has made us theme park people. Just don't think we are. But what we are is cool public park people. So we've come to... That sounded really obnoxious. Whoa! Hey Z, careful. Hey Z, hey Z. So we came to this um, skate park. Maybe there's a playground. Maybe there's like another park thing I wanted to see. And it was near this place we want to eat for dinner. And Hayes is... Enjoying it more than that ride. You can do it! Watch, 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 watch. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Hi, Nani, Daddy! the 
corner from that playground is a place called Cuckoo, which uh, won the best street food in Denmark and some award for street food in Europe. And it's Iranian food, which I've not eaten that much of. I wish I knew the dishes we had. One's like Gorma Subsidy and one's Ash Reshta. I'm sure I'm saying that incorrect. And we're eating outside of the train station. It's great. Hayes is watching TV. Mm. Good morning. We're at Juno Bakery. And there's a line out the door, which is always a good sign. Oh, excuse me. And they have the most amazing Danish pastries. Stephanie went for this like almond croissant type jobby. We've been in Denmark for like four days now. We haven't had a Danish. I don't know why they're called Danish. Also, this is over five dollars, so that's fun. No, but seriously, it's worth every penny. And one somebody that follows us, Shara, thank you for recommending this place. She only recommended one thing. She had no idea what we were saying. And this is like two blocks from our Airbnb, so great recommendation. It is actually worth five dollars. I went for a um, vanilla custard swirl, uh, which looks rather good. And Hayes went for the cheapest option, which is great, which is just a plain milk bun. Hey. Hazy, how's your bun? Great, great. Is it great? Mm -hmm. And don't forget the tram track. What about them? Those guys want to hear about the tram track. They do? Mm -hmm. Definitely the best almond croissant I've had in my life. There goes like 50 cents. Now we've already raved about the public transportation here. We're in the front of the train right now, and with something as simple as a sticker that they've put on it, Hayes can pretend to drive it. Like, I think it's four kids. They just put the sticker down, and it's just, it's a lovely touch. I see we're coming in today. Something I've like never seen in the wild before is a bus. Like we just came to the end of this bus line, and then they like extend this thing up, to this thing hanging over, and it recharges the bus. Oh! It's brilliant! And I bet there's like solar panels on top of it. They're just like so smart. Now the bus is just going to recharge, and then it will continue. Now we've come to an area, I don't know how to say the name, Refshalm, which used to be an old shipyard, but the ship making company went bankrupt in 96 and it's been redeveloped uh, in the Contemporary Art Museum here, as well as Northern Europe's largest uh, street food market. So we're gonna go do those things. I was just saying to Pete how it is funny how many things here say like Northern Europe's da 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 which is funny to me because it's like a small section of an already small continent. Very proud. Okay, while these two are totally engrossed in the art, I want to tell you why we've actually been going to so many museums while we've been here in Copenhagen and riding on so much public transportation. And it's because we have the Copenhagen card. And we got our Copenhagen card by getyourguide.com, who we'd also like to thank for partnering with us on this video. Get your guide. For six thousand in over thirty-six hundred destinations around the world. They offer a wide variety of things to do, such as this food tour that we did in Tokyo a few months ago, or tickets to popular attractions like the London Eye, which you may have seen us on a couple of videos ago. Here in Copenhagen, we've been using a 48-hour Copenhagen card, which allows us admission to over 80 attractions, as well as unlimited rides on all of the public transportation. I have a left a link to get your guide where we purchased our Copenhagen card, as well as other recommendations for things that you could do here in Copenhagen. So if you're planning a trip, feel free to check it out. This one. I've said it before here, but I'll say it again. If you have a toddler, don't sleep on contemporary art museums. I don't know about everybody else's kids, but Hayes has always loved a contemporary art museum. That one was great because he loves to like put on the headphones. He had flashing lights, echoes, chambers. It was an A-plus visit, and it's so nice to watch him enjoy something that we also enjoy.
I don't normally uh, swear on this channel, but this is cool as shit. You two people sound cool when they <laughs> just sounded nerdier than usual. <laughs> So I said to Pete the other day that Copenhagen like initially wasn't as like cool as I anticipated. I think we were just in like the kind of touristy nice areas because I was telling him I expected it to have more of, sometimes I go to cities and they're like so effortlessly hip and cool. Tel Aviv is a great example that I just like walk around angry with like how cool and fun everything looks. This is giving me that like Tel Aviv vibe. Lisbon to a degree, but I haven't been there in like over 10 years. So I think it's pretty touristy, but like those cities that are just effortlessly cool and you're like oh if I had this place to hang out with my friends I would be so happy I got a um a pork yarrow gyro yeah. I got the national dish, dish of Afghanistan and some eggplant looks delicious he's got a Danish hot dog we got some beer this is great highly recommend this place okay I think we left off at the food market but we did actually stop filming most of the day because Pete has a friend from uni who is Irish, but a naturalized Swedish person living in New York and was home in Sweden. A naturalized Swedish person was a really weird way to phrase that, but he's home. He was home dealing with some visa stuff and he saw on Instagram that we were here and he was like, well, I'll take a train down from Stockholm to Copenhagen. And so we ended up spending the afternoon with him. We bummed off the second museum we were gonna go to uh, and had a beer near the food market. And then went to check out Christiana where you can't film that much, but it was fascinating um, and then came home and cooked dinner and had dinner so now we are headed on a very long travel day but this morning I did add up kind of what we would have spent at the museums and on the public transportation if we did not have that Copenhagen card and drum roll please Pete hasn't heard this yet how much do you think we saved by having the Copenhagen card um, I'm not blind Okay, all right, sorry. I think we've, we saved at least like $50, $60. We saved $7. $7? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but we weren't that ambitious. We took nine rides each on public transportation. Those are around, that's 24 kroner, which is around $3. And we only went to four attractions, I think. We did the boat tour, the design museum, the Copenhagen Contemporary, and Tivoli Gardens in 48 hours. So if you don't have a three-year-old and you're not tired from traveling around the world for a year and a half, you could probably go to like three, four attractions a day, whereas we were hitting about two, and then you'd save tons of money. But we still saved money and the convenience of it to hop on and off the public transportation. We were just talking, it made us like not worry about crisscrossing the city, which, you know, has pros and cons. We probably should have planned it out better, but we ended up kind of going like this all over Copenhagen because we had the public transportation and we still saved money. And it made us go to more attractions than I think we normally do. So all in all, I very highly recommend it. There were two days where we thought we were gonna hit another museum that we weren't able to. I was like trying to like go hard, um, but it, it was a good realization yesterday with our friend that like we should still just do what we wanna do. And we still saw a lot. And Copenhagen's a great city. We are gonna fly to the next place and we will see you in next week's video. Again, get your guide, info, Copenhagen card, as well as other of our favorite experiences around the world are in the description. If you're coming here and planning something and you happen to use those links, it helps us out. It comes at no additional cost to you. And so we hope this was helpful and we appreciate you watching. Bye. Wait a second, why don't they export this one? This one's not bad. Yeah.